Hello ladies, gentlemen, and cucumbers everywhere. Welcome back to another Andrew Bortz' career mode on expert mode in an HRT video. We're coming to you today from Silverson in the lovely United Kingdom. Still not as good as the US though. Rock on. I am Matt Ruda and... Get it, I just botched that intro. <laughs> Forgive me, this is the third time I've seen this intro sequence simply because my computer either restarted because of an update or decided to crash Firefox in the middle of the video. So let me try that again. I am Matt Ruda, aka at AgentMuller5 on Twitter. There we go. Bringing you another Andrew Bortz cast video extravaganza. Showing you his setup, a little more downforce in the rear to try to avoid the snapovers that we saw in Valencia, which, funnily enough, turned out to be a more exciting race than I thought Valencia could ever be. So go watch that. It's the video right before this one. And yeah, so here we go, going through his magic setup. Show you how Bortz does his thing. Though not as good as some random guy who said there's a video on Xbox of him doing a 105 in Brazil. I think he's got traction control or a mod on or something. Whatever. Anyway. I'm going through the pit strategy, showing you where he compares to his teammate. As you can see, Leutz is as worthless as he was in real F1. <coughs> At least he's not a cucumber. Anyway, um, Bort showing you his times, the various times that we're seeing in practice, in quality. And hopefully he can keep him up in the race, because Bort starts at B1. I don't know how the hell that happened, but Bort's had a flying qualifying session. He should have that up on his channel. I think it's at youtube.com slash elite razor or something like that. I'll post the link in the description. And there we see how the grid stacks up. We see a, uh, a virgin in the back. <laughs> Very reminiscent of real F1, sort of. Although HRT is still useless, but <laughs> we'll talk about that eventually. So here we go, to the race. We go. Are we just going to stand around? Cars prepared, let's go. There we go. Now they decide to let boards go. But yeah, um, if you remember from the last video, I got my new computer. I'm starting my own career mode. It is not 100% races, though, because I, I'm not that good yet. So um, I don't know. Depending on uh, depending on how I feel, I might actually start up my own side series where we get to make fun of me. <laughs> because driving without traction control on and going from the Xbox controller to a PC wheel is not the easiest thing in the world. So here we go. We're at the start. Hamilton behind and Weber just behind him. We got the three, four, five red lights, and we are over revving the engine a little bit. Of course, puts it up to mix three, but we are away. A little bit over revving on first and second. Hamilton is making a move on the outside, inside rather. Weber decides I'm not going to try that. Boards goes way to the outside, and Hamilton is through. Is Boards going to be able to outbreak him going into corner three? Whatever the hell this is, I don't know the names. Yes, he is. He gets by Hamilton. And Hamilton tries to make a move on the inside. Bort says, Sayonara. No, you don't have P3. Already pulling a nice gap to Hamilton, but Hamilton's going to have the top speed advantage. Going to be able to catch boards. And no. We're actually going to see boards pull away. He was fighting tooth and nail in Valencia. It was turning out to be a very good race before he had a random puncture. Spoiler alert. That completely screwed his race up. Still managed to be some finish though, as Hamilton is looking on the outside. Look at the outside. Wow, Hamilton is getting feisty. As we see Rosberg in P3, don't worry, he'll lose his tires and fall back 20 positions in the first couple laps. As we see Hamilton and Rosberg are actually fighting for the lead. Uh, Boy, it's a little bit cheeky there in that corner. Going to uh, Maggots or Beckets or Maybex, I don't even know what they're called. Something like that. An amazing corner complex, nonetheless, so. Hamilton, Jesus Hamilton, flying past Boards. Is he going to get on the outside of his Boards? going to be able to outbreak on Boards? Is Gotta be able to outbreak him, but Hamilton comes back on the inside. Hamilton is gonna take it back, and oh, he squeezes Bortz on the outside. Uh, Bortz gonna go try for another inside move. Yes, he is, but is he gonna be able to stop the car? Oh, no, not really. Oh, that would have probably been a penalty, knowing the way the FIA likes to dish those out. Oh, the way this game likes to dish them out. I'm surprised it wasn't, as we see Bortz leading Hamilton by 0.3 seconds, leading Rosberg by 0.3 roundabouts, and Weber by the exact same amount of time. Wow. That was an insane first lap. Whew. I'm already out of breath. Is Hamilton going to make it to the move? No, not really. Of course, going to keep him nicely behind. It'll be interesting once we get um, one more lap down and get into the DRS zones. <coughs> Hamilton is actually much closer than he was to boards of this section of the track last time. Hamilton might try to make a move going into that same complex corner. Sports losing control just a little bit, a little bit 
of understeer, which I guess is better than a little bit of overseer that I had. And Hamilton makes a move on the outside! Hamilton has him! Wow! Hamilton is not screwed around this race. He wants P1. Forcing the issue. As we see... No, oh, oh, oh! Nicely held, Bortzaboy. A little bit of overseer. I think he was down one gear too many. But just a little bit... As he takes a very aggressive approach to these... Uh, I think it is Maggots Beckets. I think that's what they're called. I don't know the track corners very well. Sorry, guys. Sample is out pulling a substantial gap to boards. We saw he had the top speed advantage on this section the last time. But now pulling a nice gap to boards. Whoa. Yikes. Hamilton is faster than you. And now we're going to have a fight with Rosberg on our hands. It's looking like this isn't going to be so much a race of how far up can boards go, but how many positions can he keep other people from taking. It'll be interesting to see how many places he loses during the pit stop phases, but those are... Uh, which is still a ways down the road. So you see Hamilton has a now 1.3 second roundabouts gap to Bortz. Bortz not going to be able to get the DRS. That's the deactivation zone right there, or the detection zone, excuse me. Not going to have the uh, DRS on Hamilton. Rosberg, though, will have the DRS on Bortz. So let's see what Bortz does. He defends inside in this corner. We already saw him have understeer in this corner once. He tries to defend on the inside from a charging Rosberg. He might just go right into him, but Rosberg looks like he's going to keep back. Not going to fly around the outside of Bortz. A little bit of hitch in the video there, sorry about that. That might have been on my end. As we see Rosberg now much closer to Andrew. 0.2 seconds, Hamilton two seconds ahead already. Slow down, Sebastian. So now we can see the back markers once again disjointed from the midfield. And we actually see the sharp enders pulling a little bit of a gap. But Bortz is holding nicely. Hamilton got by because of a little bit of a slip. Normally nothing too drastic, but when you're battling a car at the beginning stages of the race, that's all you need. One little slip. I didn't catch what percent option tires, I think they were around 90 something, so Bortz only cranked out one flying lap in uh, Q3. Whether or not he thought he had the pace to take P1, I don't know, but it turned out that way. But now Hamilton is leading the race from Bortz, from Rosberg, from I think Weber, and I'm not entirely sure. And now we settle in for the long haul. As we see boards, what's this time? 136.2. Respectable time for this fuel load. So you now see Rosberg's falling back, but Hamilton sets a time that is... Good God! Wow. A lot faster than boards. Hamilton is flying. I wonder if he'll eat up the tires. I'll have to wait and see. As it is now left 4.52. Rosberg, half a second behind boards, probably closer now with after that DRS zone. Tire time's doing nicely. Rosberg looking on the other side, just a little bit of a peek. As though Hamilton is four seconds. He's doubled the gap. Four seconds ahead of boards. Rosberg still about 0.4 second. Holding nicely. So we already see a huge gap between the rest of the back markers and the rest of the field. Back markers just now going into that right-hand hairpin for the rest of the field is entering the Magus Peckets complex, I think. If I'm wrong on these quarter names, you guys are going to mock me down below in the comments, but uh, I'm an American, what can I say? But yeah, U.S. Grand Prix, that's going to be, that is going to be amazing. The track looks fantastic, as we see. Ports is forming his own meta, his own version of the Truly Train. All the sharp enders are looking to get by him, but none of them can. The air zone on this track is very small. Not exactly the most effective zone. But then again, if they had put it on all the way through the back stretch, it would have been too big. So, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Five seconds slower than his lap before. Gordon's not doing himself any favors. Now five seconds back to Hamilton. It was a little bit wide on that edge, but nothing too dramatic. Not like um, what Kobayashi did. He went wide a little bit earlier. I think it was on the um, finish stretch and uh, put his car into the wall. I almost did it if I remember. That was a scary moment. Kobayashi, you're not having the greatest of weekends in Malaysia, but Perez. Oh my god, Perez. He could have won that race. And that's what it disappoints me so much. Not that, he, not, you know, not that he spun, because, you know, shit happens and you lose your concentration, but whoever got on that radio to tell him we need these points should be fired. You cost Perez the race, you asshole.
I was so excited. Could have beat the Spaniard. As we see, Bortz's tire is a little bit worn. Nothing too, too drastic. Left front looks a little bit, uh, a little bit dicey, though. That'll be interesting to watch when we get a bit further in the race. Ooh, really slippy going into these corners. Having a downshift to three. I said three erd. I just made up a word. Go mate. Once again, I'm an American. Sue me. But, um, <laughs> uh, all joking aside, Perez, massively, massively impressive effort. He should have a seat at Ferrari. I think we both know who I think should go from Ferrari, but seeing as he just joined Twitter, I will be nice to Felipe Baby in this video in a commemoration of him joining Twitter. Simply because, not because my opinions have changed or anything like that, I still think he shouldn't be in Ferrari, but seeing the amount of trolls he's getting, like hardcore trolls, like people saying shit that I would never say, give him a bit of a break. So I'll give him a bit of a break, because I'm telling people to give him a break on Twitter, I will give him a break in this video. Although, I mean, what more do I need to say besides Alonso won the race, Felipe was in 16th, or 15th, either way. As you see, Rosberg, we're now on lap 7, we're out! Ooh, that was scary, Rosberg! Gets past Bortz. Bortz having to do some quick moves to avoid uh, to avoid finding a wall in his car in various places and his body parts in various places. But that has compromised his line through that corner massively. As we see, Weber is catching. He's um, race engineer saying that he is faster than Rosberg in sector two, but right now it seems like Rosberg's faster everywhere else. Oh, maybe not there. Uh, uh. See, Bortz is trying to do his little trademark divey divey stuff, but can't do it because it seems like his car just does not want to grip there again very soon corner that let Hamilton catch up to him right quick and now we have Weber on his ass is Weber going to be able to make the move we see Hamilton far 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 away from anyone else so we have skipped to lap 8 Weber still behind boards one and a half second gap to Rosberg so not losing uh, pace with Rosberg as fast as he was to Hamilton Bortz a little bit hesitant on that upshift there, and Weber is on his inside. Bortz is going to have to, uh, oh, he's going to have to let uh, b -b 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 Weber through, and he's going to have to let Schumacher through on my, wait, no, that's Massa, Massa, Felipe, baby, what are you doing up here? As you see, Bortz right back on the tail of Weber, uh, getting a little bit sideways, and going to compromise this line through there. Bortz flicking it up to mix three, he wants Weber. He's not going to let the Aussie bastard get in that easily. So we see Massa all over the back of Bortz. Um, I, I, I haven't planned anything in my head for this scenario, so I don't know what to say. Well, oh, massively sideways. It seems like I think all that rear downforce is not helping us stab over series. We're going to catch Weber now. Actually, a really nice line through that corner. We're going to be able to get back on the power early enough, but Weber still pulling that gap. Bortz is going to have DRS on Weber. Uh, so we're going to skip to lot 9 now, so obviously the DRS didn't really do anything. Weber is pulling away. Rosberg is away, and Hamilton is won the race pretty much unless he spins like he did in Hungary and now we have to deal with Felipe half a second behind boards and whoa closing massively Massa on the outside Massa's not going to get a boards in this corner boards is just going to break nicely and take the inside line but Felipe's going to swing back out or what is Felipe going to do is he going to try to take him on the inside here no he's not going to try to take him on the inside here Hamilton says another fastest lap of the race and we're now on lap 12 same complex. Sports comes in. Four tires. I think he's going to do prime prime. <laughs> Ooh, it almost looked like um, Massa bumped into the back of Schumacher there. Maybe still pit lane speed limit because this uh, pit lane here at Silverstone does cut quite a lot of the track. And now everyone and the mama is coming in for tires. Let's see how Bortz will get away. Is it going to be really? Go. Yep. He's got them all. Very lucky since they're all stacked nose to tail. If he hadn't gotten out in time, if he had tortilla at the tardy pit stop or uh, just screwed something up, Bortz would have been behind all these guys. There would have been very little hope for him. So he's got this backfield stacked up behind him. But what of the midfielders? The back markers will be easy enough to pass, but with the pace that everyone else seems to have been having on boards, especially in the straight sectors, it'll be interesting now that everyone else is out running another lap free of the rolling roadblock that is Bortz's HRT of this race. Uh-oh. Well, it's not going to matter if he loses it. And Fettel's up there. 
the cucumber. He's making a move on the outside. No, he's not. He's going to try to make a move in this corner. If somebody signs on to play F1 2011. Voila, I think it said. I'm not sure. Anywho. No moves from Vettel. He's going to stay directly behind Bortz. But like I was saying, it'll be interesting to see if the midfield's been able to pull any sort of gap now that they were free from Andrew Bortz's truly train. Vettel trying to make a move on Bortz. Almost went into the back of him. Whoa. Very feisty line through there. Cutting the corner a bit. Almost lost the car. But, um... I almost lost the car again there, too. But nicely held. Now we're going to see the top speed advantage coming to its own again. It could be that the rest of these cars are just on a lower downforce package, but it doesn't seem to be helping boards in the corners any. He's still got Snap Overseer out the wazoo. And, uh, just doesn't know what to do with it. He's getting Understeer in a lot of Sector 2, and there, oh, there he is again. Understeer in that corner. But everywhere else is getting Snap Overseer. So we're going to see... Is he going to be able to beat this line out of the pits? He's going to be able to beat some of them, but not all of them. Critically, who's he going to get past? He's going to get past uh, Perez. So he's past the, spa the, sa the Spauber. He's past the Spauber. And uh, now he's behind Button. And that might be Alonso. Because Felipe had to go in the pits. He's got the DRS. Not feeling confident enough to open it on that last kink. And now we are still behind Button. On lap 18. Plant pit stop on lap 32. And nicely caught boards. Very scary moment there. Full off lock and he's got it under control. Perez, looking to repeat his Malaysia performance, is gonna. Nope. Not gonna take boards in that corner. So, can we catch Button? That's the question of the hour. Right now, from the timing screens, that would be a no. But, critically, I don't know what tires the AI are on. I don't know what their stop strategies are. I've seen boards do some crazy, crazy shit before. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries some of that here. Maybe he goes for an option soon after running the primes extremely long. Uh, could happen. But right now we see Petrov was obviously passed by Button and maybe others. Perez is going to try to make a move on the outside. That's not going to hold. Wurtz is going to be able to hold him off nicely on the inside. Oh, a eh, little bit of a bump. Wurtz getting some medicine. Well, Perez, Sergio! Sergio is fighting Wurtz and Full Metal gets by! Holy crap! Vettel, the Cucumber, just took Bortz, going right behind Perez. Perez was not given that lineup. Is Bortz going to make a move on the Cucumber on the outside? Nope, he's going to have the inside. But, oh, whoa, oh, God, this is getting scary. Alonso is trying to make a move as well. They are tired of being held up by the rolling roadblock. As we're going to see Bortz, is he going to try to make a move? No, he, no way in hell is he going to make a move in these corners. He'd be insane to try to do that. He's going to have the uh, Slipstream going out onto the straightaway. But is it going to be enough? We've seen these cars have such a top speed advantage. Yes, he might be able to hang with them, but he's not going to be able to make an overtaking move. This is not enough of a braking zone. Well, maybe it is. Jesus! As we go on the inside of Vettel. Are we going to get the acceleration? No. Okay, so Boris is going to try to swing back again, but he gets under in this corner. I wouldn't be surprised if he hits him. Oh, uh, yep. He hit Perez. And Perez is going around. Oh! Vettel! Vettel! Just went straight into him. I knew that was going to happen. I have to say, although I wouldn't give him a penalty, I could tell that was going to happen. He's been having understeer in that corner the entire race. I think that was a bit of an optimistic move to try to make an overtake in that corner, knowing, well, just knowing how the car's been handling there. Vettel, maybe, get alongside Vettel and take him on the inside, but Sergio, there was no way he was going to take that position. Chops half of Vettel's wing off, uh, so that, that hasn't gone well. And now we're going to take, I think, this is our drive through penalty, I think? 37 miles an hour. So torturous, so slow, so horrible, so boring. I'm going to have a drink while I wait. And that's going to do nothing good for Bortz's race as we see uh, his teammate back there getting some tires. And, oh, God. That's just ruined his race. I mean, the only way he could get himself back into that position again is if he didn't stop. But, I mean, I, I, I can't see any way of him holding these tires out for another, what, 28 laps? Yeah, there's no way in hell. So we see now to lap 30 of 52. So we see uh, who's all over the back of boards now. 
Is that Maldonado, or is that one of the lead? That's not a leader, because so you don't get the blue flag. So it's Maldonado, one of the Williams, who have actually shown, I can't believe I'm about to say this, surprising pace cover the course of these last two races. Oh my god, Maldonado is flying. Past boards. The board's going to try to move on the inside, but he's going to, uh, uh, again, with the understeer. Going to bump into Maldonado, but thankfully, not spinning him and not getting himself another penalty. But yeah, Williams has shown some rather impressive pace for what I thought they would be doing. I still wonder what they could do if they didn't have two pay drivers and they actually had a real good Formula One driver on their books, like Barrichello. Or, I mean, hell, okay, Barrichello was getting old. If you wanted someone younger, take Kimi. Kimi was make it, looking to make a return, and he's done spectacularly for Lotus, considering that he hasn't raced in F1 for two years, and then three years even. Two years? Three years? Something like that? 2009, so whenever he quit in 2009, or got fired, or whatever you call it, in 2009, I don't exactly know when that whole controversy happened. It was end of season, or beginning of season. The seaboard's getting a little bit out of shape. It went in to his, this infamous complex again. It's very easy to uh, outbreak yourself going into there, but it didn't seem like Bortz, even even when he wasn't trying an overtake, he was still getting understeer. I would not have tried to make that move on Perez, but he did. He got the penalty, and it's been served, so there you go. What else can you do about it? So we see Bortz in P17. 16 is, what was that? 20 seconds ahead, so about a pit stop. Blue flag's coming out for Hamilton, I would assume. Funny to think that not long ago, Bortz was, uh, Bortz is right up there, battling for position with Lewis. There goes Lewis now. He's going to tuck in, and Maldonado's going to go back again, but Bortz is just going to take it. He's going to, uh, 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 watch out for Hamilton. Don't spin him. He'll make an LEG comment, and that won't go well. It's saying next up is one of the McLarens, but um, I think you'll find Mr. Engineer Guy that McLaren is on a different lap than Bortz is. Anywho, we're now set for a battle with Maldonado. Not the battle Bortz wanted to be having. P17 and 18 for the goal to finish P10. 31. Pit stop is scheduled for the next lap around. Field projections are perfectly fine. 25 seconds behind Sutil. As you see, Maldonado is going to try to make move on the outside here. Bortz is going to have him on the inside. Maldonado on the option tire, Looks though. Like so if Bortz holds on these tires... Whoa! And Maldonado is still going to be on the outside! Is Maldonado going to take him? Maldonado. <laughs> Bortz, oh, again with the understeer. Maldonado's going to have it! Maldonado passes Bortz for P17. This race has just gone to shit for Andrew. And no punctures either. What I was about to say, though, is if Bort stays out on these uh, prime tires, which it looks like he's doing, lap 35, 5, 6 seconds even, behind Sudel. So, mm, they obviously pitted. Maldonado stayed out. D'Ambrosio is, uh, well, more than a lap down, I, would, I think. Oh, my God, not again! Puncture, not again, the puncture! puncture. Jesus, Bort cannot catch a break! That is the second puncture in as many races. God. What is it with these punctures? I mean, wow. Okay, well, Bortz's race is fucked. There's no other way to say it. I was going to, for the third time, try and say that if he could say all of these primes without getting a puncture, critically, I hadn't said that until he got the puncture. He could have just gone on to a set of options, and he might have been able to start clawing his way back up to the midfield. But not anymore. Oh, God, it's all gone wrong. Temporosio is, on a, uh, is a lap down from Bortz. So that was not for position. Weber said the fastest time. A 132. Oh, there, there, there are bollards there. Bortz, are hit. Bortz is hitting the bollards. Oh, God. Well, another race, another puncture. Bortz just cannot catch a break. As is that Hamilton again? <laughs> I think that was Hamilton again. Hamilton's absolutely flying. As is this another lead lap? What? Felipe? How? How the hell? Oh my god! <laughs>
Three punctures. Oh, sorry, Andrew. I'm not laughing at you, but <laughs> I would be surprised if this last tired is gone. <laughs> oh God. Ooh. Well, he might be able to get on the to the end on a set of options. What is that? Uh, oh, now he can't get the tire off. Now he's gonna go for primes. Slightly worn primes. Only seven seconds. Seven point six. Consider he had three punctures. That's not bad. Oh man. Whew. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need another drink. Hang on. All right. So, what I was trying to say before Ports lost almost all of his tires was masses in P2 behind Hamilton. So we might have hope yet. There is probably going to be a massive accident at some point. This is Vettel in P6, the cucumber, going by. Since he seems brave enough to call other drivers that when it's his fault for his own shit, I'm going to just call him the cucumber. If you can dish it, you should be able to take it, baby. Anywho, this race is done, pretty much. Um, the penalty aside, with those three punctures and being 30... Four seconds behind Maldonado and on prime tires. I cannot foresee any way, shape, or form, and now we're even a second um, more behind. Lap 39. There's no way Bortz is going to be able to catch Maldonado. So P18 is where Bortz will finish as long as um, nothing else weird happens. Whoa, Liuzzi. Not getting out of the way for Bortz. But Bortz nicely handled with good reflexes, knows exactly what to do. So we got the blue flags out again. Let's see. Is it the leaders again? And who is in P1? Should be Hamilton. Yep, that looks silver. So Hamilton is still leading the race. Blue flags are still flying. But um, they haven't caught up to him quite so much yet. Is there we go? Letting. Oh wait, no. That's uh, that's P7. Sorry, that's Schumacher. Well, I got the color right. Just got the driver wrong. Schumacher, who I expected great things from in Malaysia, but he got tagged from behind by... Uh, was that Grosjean? Or was that... The Tarasso? I, I don't remember exactly what. Um, anyway, got spun around and kind of fell off from there. So at least he had an excuse. Rosberg had none, but he still failed. I don't know if that's so much driver thing or if that's just the car just shreds its tires way too quickly. As we see boards chasing, I, I don't know who this is to be honest. Uh, Mal no, it's not Maldonado, that is Heidfeld? Is it? Yep. So Lewis Hamilton wins the race. Boards going after Heidfeld. Although Heidfeld is a lap above Boards at least. So no gain in position. So P18 is where he's going to finish unless he completely beaches his car. That was uh, that was an exciting race, I gotta say. Not for the right reasons, but still exciting. It's still very, very entertaining. Glad, uh, God, I was able to work out a few computer issues to get this turned around quite quickly. And uh, yeah. So for uh, full race recaps, we're gonna. Hopefully within the next week or so, be able to shoot another Backmarkers F1 episode. Now that uh, Steve is back in Nigeria and back on a solid schedule. Sorry for everyone who's been missing uh, Steve, aka Cadmus, aka Villain F1. All his, uh, all his casting goodness in both our podcast and his own race commentaries and whatnot. But between uh, visiting families and whatnot and hectic time schedules, it's kind of, kind of hard to keep it all, keep it all going. I have not made F1 my life yet. It's a major part of my life, but not... Like, whoa, and we got a last lap. Almost been there from Bortz as we got... Uh, 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 whoa, that was a hell of a finish. Andrew Bortz, P18, a very interesting last corner for a very interesting race. I think that pretty much sums up, uh, sums up this entire race in one corner complex. Sideways, out of control, and everywhere. As we see Hamilton from Weber, from Button, from Petra, from Massa. Massa slipped back to P5. Maybe he was out of sync with the pit stop phase. I don't know. Vettel, Schumacher, Heifel, Blamey, Perez, Deresta, Aldeswar, Kebayashi, Berlichello, Sewell, Rosberg, Rosberg, Pimikins, uh, or William, or 
Mercedes Evans performance with Maldonado. Fourth is Ambrosio Glock, Liuzzi. Liuzzi having a solid performance, truly Kovalainen. And Alonso did not finish the race, so something happened to F uh, Fernando. Wonder what it was. As we see here is the driver championships. Hamilton is leading Weber by a grand total of four points. So a very close battle for the lead. We have a tie for 10th between Wemby and Heidfeld with the ports coming in 12th. Then Kobayashi and... Oh, oh. You, whatever. Pause the video if you're really keen on seeing that. HRT is still P8 in the constructors. Sauber having overtaken them after a few shaky results from boards in the last two races. McLaren is clearly up on top. Williams down to P10. <laughs> getting beaten by an HRT. Well, last year's car probably could have been getting beat by an HRT if the HRT had curse. But <clears throat> an abject, downtrodden, disheartened, and utterly pissed off Andrew Bortz. And the uh, engineer doesn't look too happy either. Here comes stereotypical old guy pushing the camera. And that is that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully we'll be able to get the next video to you extremely quickly. It's going to be Germany, a track that always has uh, some interesting elements to it. Well, at least uh, this one does. Hockenheim, I'm not so sure. But anyway, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.